go. We were talking before the toilet break about your development personally, spiritually, and you know, um, us athletically being in Norway, so in a team that wasn't quite what you were expecting. Mm. What was the development that you got sort of personally that you brought back here? They're like, okay, here's how I changed from that experience, you know, and then what things did you do? Like, what things do you think back you, you did or had to do while you were there that have probably led to the change that you've experienced now? Mm. Um, yeah, it, I've always been like religious with my family, like, we, you know, not overly, but well, I'm Catholic, we would always go to Christmas masses mm -hmm. and, and all that, so. I always had that background spiritually, but I never really tapped into it, never really, you know, did anything about it or felt mm. like I was connected to it um, until I went, you know, until I went over there and just struggled like what we were speaking about before, like um, in so many different areas and having, you know, it just every day being so hard, such a hassle almost to get out and train and, and try and win games and just feel like you're the only one trying type thing um so i yeah i just had i had this wave of like uh, actually i was living with um one of these girls and she was by the bible religious mm -hmm. and i you know i was a little bit skeptical at first but um after just spending some time obviously with her because I live with her um and you know hearing what she has to say it made me think about well maybe I could connect to like God in that way and um obviously she reads the bible and does bible study and all that sort of stuff that I don't do um but I did like personally with myself take my own time um to realize well okay why am I here you mm -hmm. know like if this sucks so bad there's got to be a reason as to why I'm here. Yeah. Like, like, you know, so I looked at it from that perspective and looked at it as though I'm supposed to be here for a reason. What can you yeah, 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 like what can I get out of it? So, and I got out of it, connect, I connected with God and spiritually just felt like I was supposed to struggle and I was supposed to, you know, go through all this stuff because in the future or whenever else I'm going to benefit from it one day. Definitely. Yep. So, um, Very cool. Yeah, I, I'm really like, that's one. Like, I don't regret my decision going now because I took so much out of it personally, uh, rather than yeah, yeah. rather than football when I when I knew that I, when I knew it couldn't get any better for me in that way. So, um, yeah. like, what did you do when you were there? Then, so you you say tough times. You know, you said about mm -hmm. the girls not being technically as gifted or didn't mm -hmm. know the, the rules or whatnot. What did you find yourself doing then to? Like, did you find yourself establishing a leadership role within the team and like coming into it as, as a foreigner, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then if so, what did that involve for you? Were there like communication challenges? Like what was that? There, you're there, you wake up and like, here we go again. Mm -hmm. You know, what was that process? What things did you do that, that might have, I don't know, led to, what happened with the team in the end? Let's get started. Uh, we won one game, however, they did get relegated. <laughs> um, but in fairness, they shouldn't be in the top league. You know, yeah. they don't have the funding from up high the club to fund a top league Norwegian team. They don't obviously have the skill. They don't have the talent. They don't have the people in the team yeah. to be able to be a competitive team. So they do deserve to go yeah. down. They would be good in the next bottom, mm -hmm. the next league. They would be fine, um, and hopefully one day they can get back up there. But. Yeah, look, every day it was, it was hard and I did try and be that leader and I did try and work on that aspect for myself as mm -hmm. well as the team. Um, How so, so? Like, what things did you find yourself doing? Oh, talking to young, young, the younger girls, trying to explain things, trying to help them learn, trying to teach them, trying to um, give them aspects of my game that I've learnt when maybe I was their age that I didn't mm -hmm. know that they can then go on. Because when I was their age, I was... You know, I, I had internationals as well playing in my team and they taught me so much, you know. So I'm now at that age where I can sort yep. of Pass do the on. same thing. So um, I just tried to do it in that in that way and um, that w was really all I could do, you know. You c can't just prick your fingers and of they'll course. be better type thing, so, mm. yeah. And like on the park then, did you change your game style because you're in the, like, because of the situation <coughs> of the team, the culture of the team, mm. did you change your game style to then 
exaggerate like leadership qualities? Um, yes and no. I did the, what I would do normally as a leader type thing, um, but like I was just having to work extra hard because mm -hmm. girls would be out of position, girls would be doing this, girls would be doing that. So and that would all kind of funnel back here to the defence. So um, I guess it was just tough, tough all round. Yeah. Did it help you understand a game anymore? Um, I know from my, I, I guess I've, everyone puts their point of view to themselves. So mm -hmm. when I played basketball, I had a good understanding, but I understand it more now that I'm a coach of basketball. Mm -hmm. Being the leader of the team, being almost an on-field coach, did you, did it help develop your understanding of the game further? Um, yeah, I think so slightly. Um, I looked at it like I've always had a leadership quality sort of about me, so I've always liked to be. Um, sort of leader figure, I guess. Um, so I love coaching, mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing that at the moment, coaching young girls, but um, I, you do take from that ways of how to speak to people, how yeah. to handle things, mm -hmm. what to say, um, you know, can you say it in this way, can you say it in that way, how are they gonna get the message mm -hmm. that you're trying to tell them type thing. So yeah, I guess you do, you do take a little bit out of yep. that, um, from, from that side of things, but uh, like learning from the game, I guess, as well, you unconsciously kind of take things as well and being able to add them to your game that that you don't really know, yep. but, um, but you know, maybe like having to just always make sure that you are in the right position because you don't know who's going to be out of position or get yep. beat or whatever. Whereas if you're in a team where you know that they're good players and you know that they're good, sometimes you might take that for granted a little bit. You might be like, oh, okay, I'm just assuming that she's, yep. yeah, type thing. So maybe yep. that. Mm. Maybe that. Yeah. What about outside of soccer in Norway? Same thing with us, run me, run me through the country, let me live vicariously through you, being in Norway, because <laughs> Norway's one of my goals, I'm going to get there one day, I'm going to be able to coach them and go travel, yeah. right? but in regards to the country, the culture, the food, shark chips, I don't know shark chips over there, like what's <laughs> that, that kind of, yeah, the, the, the country itself. Yeah, similar to Iceland in there, in the way that they're surrounded by water, so their fish is their greatest food type thing in there. Shark chips? Shark chips. Tell me well, shark there's more shark chips. <laughs> no, they didn't have shark chips there. But, well, that I saw anyway. Um, but they love their salmon, they love their fresh fish, mm -hmm. um, tuna, so all that like stuff that just is yeah, yeah. in their backyard that they can just go and fish. Like tuna's a massive, um, and salmon, massive industry, massive multi-million dollar industry that they ship to China. I can all yeah. that sort of stuff, so... I just have an image of, like, John West ad. <laughs> Some guy put it, the thing jumps up and he catches it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually, as a part of, because one of our sponsors was a salmon... Um, as you would expect. As it was a salmon... A distributor? Uh, getter of the fish. Get, fisher. Fisherman. Salmon, <laughs> a salmon getterer. <laughs> he was a collector. It was a... <laughs> company that gets all the fish, yeah. um, pretty much, cuts them and sends them off, and um, me and one of the other girls actually got to go out to this factory that they had, and um, have a tour of, you know, you know, the fish come in through the net, they're electrocuted, dead, yeah. around here, skiing, whatever else, um, and then, you know, out there, and we got to hold a big salmon, it was huge, it was this big, and it was heavy, it was really heavy. Yeah. And we did like a little photo shoot there. It was really. Okay. Are they on the gram? Uh, not on the gram because uh, it was in the <laughs> But uh, in the memories in in there. But um, yes, yeah, so that was that was one of the cool experiences. Yeah. Um, again, that you just have to, you know, okay, I get to do this. That's cool. Wouldn't have had, wouldn't have been able to do it here. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, culturally as well, they. The weather, the things that they eat, mm -hmm. different. So, like at breakfast, they'd be eating like a piece of bread with like, like lunch kind of stuff, like cold lunch, okay, foods like cold meats and stuff on a piece of bread was their like, you know. Whereas I was be having like eggs and stuff, yeah, you know, yeah, for Solid game meals. day breakfast. Yeah. So a little bit different, a little bit weird, a little bit different there, but yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't as it wasn't as dissimilar as I said. Okay. It was more, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. What are your game day traditions then? Mm -hmm. Tangentialize that. Is that a word? Can I roll with that? What was that? Tangentialize. We're going to go on a tangent. 
Oh, no, that's, that's a Josh word. That I'm going with it. Heard it's heard my it. new word, tangentializing. Murder for my It's going to happen. So, like, game day routines, do you have any? What are they? What are the weirdest ones you've got? Um, I'm not too superstitious. Yep. So I don't have things that I absolutely have to do, and if I don't do them, I'm going to die. Yep. Um, I get coffee. I have a good feed. Do you go to Argo? No. Everyone goes to Argo. The no, last year I've me. Argo is pretty good, yeah. though. It, it, it is pretty good, but when sponsorship, <laughs> when it's, I think when it's, you can have too much of a, of a good thing, yeah. and I think I went there last year. Like every Friday, I wasn't even playing. I was just going to sponsor. I was just there. I was like, oh look, everyone's got Argo. Like I got Argo, and then I was just like, I'd have enough for Argo, uh, not because they're bad. This just had too much. That was my game of routine. Everything's mm-hmm. going. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I just get coffee. It's not a specific yep. place. I just go get coffee. Um, have a good feed, maybe have eggs, eggs and avo and toast, you know, classic. Made at home though. Fit bit. Made at home, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So eggs, avo on toast is your... Mushrooms. Yeah. Mushrooms, mm-hmm. yeah. That's what I usually like to have for breakfast. Um, but if I'm like on a away trip or something and I don't really have all that, I just make do. So I'm yeah, not yeah, like, yeah. if I don't have it, oh my God. Where's my avo? Like diva. Yeah, yeah. McCormick the diva. No, definitely Because some people don't diva. like so too much fats and proteins before games. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really. You don't look at that too much, or no. you just you deal with it well. I just usually have like make sure I have like bread, um, you know, just get the get the carbs in. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I I don't really have too many superstitions to be honest. I like to. Well, like about put your shoes on or socks on in certain ways. I like to have um, one of these towels I have over my seat. I like to have everything sort of set out nicely, like have Do you have to set there. it or someone else? Sets no, it I set it. I set it. I want. I'm going yeah. beaver track. No, yeah. I set it. I want to walk in there. <laughs> Yeah, so the towels out, your slides yeah, are yeah, there. Slides are there, socks are ready, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, is this in the change room or is it, Yeah, okay. in the change room, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, if you've usually got ninety minutes before you have to go mm-hmm. out and yep. warm up or whatever, then I like to just take the time. You, you listen to music at all? Uh well there's usually a speaker in this in the thing in the change mm-hmm. room, so yeah, that goes on there. But, but sometimes did, I'll have my yeah. um, headphones in. Um, I did occasionally uh, with AFLW mm. um, have like, you know warm up with me, and that's a little bit different to soccer as well. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, On that note, going. So I'm going to tangentialize again. Tangentialize. <laughs> I'm going to tangentialize. I'm going to look it up. Because I swear I got it. I think you're on, you're on, on your own then, mate. You're on your own. <laughs> uh, um, so, footy. Yeah, so that was I soccer. Know. I like to do the same with footy. I like to have a towel out. I like to have my slides ready. Socks Someone has to, to like, tell you down like a massage beforehand with footy as well. <laughs> that, whole, that whole thing. Does no. the AFLW have that sort of service where you, know, you have massage therapists there for you pre game and everything working for you? They do. Mm. So, funny story when I. Um, my turnaround time between my first, my last soccer game and my first AFL game last year. Okay. So the very first one that I played, I had come off of the back of um, the semi-final that we lost with Canberra United yep. on the yep. Sunday. Yep. On the Monday, I organised flights, packed up all my shit, um, got my cat to Adelaide. So you got your cat to Adelaide? Yeah, I fostered a cat in Canberra and then <laughs> I ended up keeping What's it. What's the cat's name? Kiki. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, she's so cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, on the Tuesday, I was um, home, yep. pretty much. Um, and then on the, oh, I think it might have been the Thursday, Yeah. we had a game. Yeah. Or it might have, no, Friday we had a game. Friday. And it was in Melbourne, so yeah. Thursday we had to travel. So I had a big week. Anyway, so on that Friday, um, so with soccer, when we travel away, we have a coach, assistant coach, physio, probably team manager. So okay. four. <laughs> When we travelled to Melbourne that first week for against the Bulldogs, so this, this was the first ever. No, 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 no. no? Okay. They'd played the Giants before that, and I missed out on that because that's I right. Yeah, okay. The final. This was round two. Second, yeah. My first, first game. Ever. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We travelled mm-hmm. with, you know, all the assistant coaches in footy. You know, you've got defence coach, forward yep. coach. Yep. So there's like five coaches. Yeah. You know, six coaches, and then you've got your manager. Then you've got um, our general manager. So I like. Higher. The big boss. Then we've got um, massage therapists. So four of them, say. Four of them. Then we've got physios that come the day of, doctors that come the day of. Um, 
So they, they're all from that all Adelaide base? Assistant manager, yeah, all Adelaide, all Adelaide base. And then when we're there, because yeah. the boys use the same people. Okay. So when so in Melbourne, they have like staff, like okay, yeah. um, tr- um, massage therapists and stuff that yeah. come to the game. Okay, yeah. Um, that, that the boys use. And it, like, it, it, no joke, no word of the lie, there was more staff than players. And there was... You know where we go with this. There was... Um, in the change rooms, we um, yeah we we can have a massage or whatever. And I looked over and because I'm not used to the footy culture, I wasn't back then. Okay, I yeah. wasn't used to the footy culture. And I looked over and one girl was on the massage bed. There was a guy on her left calf, a guy on her right calf, a, one on her back, and one on. There was four people <laughs> massaging her at once, and I was like, like this is just crazy. Like I'm not, I've never been exposed to anything yeah. like this. And it's just because like obviously the club is so established and yeah. has so much money and so much resources that they can give you that. Did you did you look over there and like, I'm next? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, like, I'm making the most of this. I'm making the most of this time right now. Yeah. This is, this Whereas is. like in soccer, there's only one physio. So, yeah. you know, you're lining up, you've got to get in first or else you, you, know, yeah. you might miss out on a massage before the game or something like that. So um, it's definitely cool that at least yeah, you know, yeah. everyone will get treatment. Hold on, it, it reminds me of when you go to Bali, you know, have you ever been to Bali? Have you been to Bali? Mm-hmm. No? You've been to Bali? Yeah. There was a time when I was in Bali, and, well, I've been there a lot of times, but one of the times in particular, I remember walking down the beach, and you get, like, five people coming up to the same thing, massage, one braids your mm-hmm. hair, one does your nails, mm-hmm. one does your toes, and mm-hmm. at this time, <laughs> it's great, at this time, the girl that was there on the thing, because I was, like, walking down San Diego, so, um, she was like getting it done and kind of assume Westerners that, you know, oh, it's one service, cool. Who's the head? Who's the boss? Pay you the money. They were all separate businesses. Mm. So she's gone to pay the money and one of them, she's like, oh, 10,000, whatever the hell it was. Gone to pay the money to her and the other one's like, no, no, you're going to pay me for the nails. And the other one's like, you're going to pay me for the, the toes and it'll be like six times the cost. <laughs> just for, I just had that image where we like, one's on the car and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I that, that story. So that's crazy. So yeah. my head then, no. When you guys travel, right, for those sixes, what are the support staff like? Uh, in pre-season, it's pretty full on. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's more in pre-season than during the season. Okay, so let's talk in season. In season? Yeah. Because uh, it's only a pretty quick travel, so be, they leave on, say, a... Depends on where we travel, obviously Perth and New Zealand being longer trips, yep. uh, we travel for a bit longer. But, so depending where we travel, it would normally be... And if it's a double header or not as well, should I say? So it'd be the three coaches, so head coach, two assistant coaches, and then the team manager. Yeah. Um, we've started bringing in a physio as well, just to give the boys a bit of extra support. Yeah. Um, a, tra- a traveling physio. You've traveling got physio. physio here. Yep. 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 Um, there's always an assistant, so other assistant team managers in each state. They help us out as well. Okay. So every time we go to Melbourne, there's a guy that will help us out, or yep. a girl will help us out there as well. Um, I won't travel during the season, but I travel everywhere during the pre-season because yep. it's sort of my time to shine, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always the condition. So you get your diva on. That, that's from my diva. Your towel out, yeah. your slides oh, there. I expect my shit Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not anywhere near the football level, the yeah. AFL or w- AFLW level. Uh, when I went, caught up with Port Power mm-hmm. and I asked, spoke to Darren Burge and said, you know, What's your S and C team like? Is that there's nine of us? Yeah, like nine. Nine S and Cs. There's one of me. Yeah. yeah. What and what like I like AFL stuff. So we saw it with with AFLW coming in. The money behind the business is huge. It's a huge, and they and Massive. they can invest in that. Where my head goes is if you've got teams so soccer, basketball, football, all elite level. Some can travel with four. Some can travel with twenty four. All right. My point is, what's the what's the point of of like, you know, there's there's the point of you know limited games now. You're gonna to get to a point where you really don't need more people. Yep. Like, what is that point? And what would so what would nine S and Cs do? You know, what would I guess four massage therapists do? You could probably back up this as yeah. well. Football, there's a lot more players to yeah. attend to. Like, us, we have I mean, game night. There's twelve people, mm-hmm. and really two of those are DPs, development players. They're pretend not really going to... What's that? So pretend we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Two <laughs> yeah. development players yeah. who aren't really going to get any court time. They might get some what we call garbage time, which is we're 30 points up with five or two minutes left. Joe be yeah. like, on you go, yeah. have some fun, learn some things, that yeah. sort of thing. So they won't really get any massage um, or anything beforehand. 
other than that, so you got so then what's, what's that make it? Ten players that will get assistance. So mm-hmm. then there's myself if we're here. Mm-hmm. There's myself. There's actual massage therapist, doctor, and physio. Mm-hmm. So four play four staff between ten players. Pretty easy to get through considering yeah. we get here about an hour and a half before the game starts. Mm-hmm. Away, it's a little bit more time. So the physio will be at the hotel room mm-hmm. doing treatments and then go to the game and do some more treatments. Mm-hmm. Um, that sort of thing. We could definitely use us some more, but compared to football, yeah, you know, how many tra- how many players travel? Yeah, how many travel? Twenty five. Twenty, yeah, yeah. 20, so there's yeah, more than 20, double the amount. Actual, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Something like around that. Or maybe twenty three, because there's sixteen on the field. Yeah. And then there's now. Because there's sixteen for. Actually, maybe only twenty one, twenty one or twenty two, but yeah, anyway, okay. more, way more. Not yeah. less than us. Yeah. So yeah, obviously with football being bigger, yeah. you need more players, you need more staff yeah. to um, suit that. Yeah, of yeah. course. How did you find the turnaround then from, or even, or even trainings, um, and the time period where you've gone from W into AFLW? Like, the, the training intensity or the training styles or learning the game plans or going... All right, this week I'm playing soccer, this week I'm playing footy, like I can use my hands this week, you know, like mm. how does that transition go for you? Um, well, the first year uh, when I was in Canberra, I pretty much wasn't involved in any pre season mm-hmm. stuff because I was located in mm-hmm. Canberra. Um, I went down for a few, you know, the launch day yeah. and the I stayed behind when we played at like you know, like mm-hmm. um, so I was really only around the team like twice, you know, it's so really hard to build any relationships with the team, um, but. In saying that, it was really easy when I came in, so seamless transition, yep. um, and and I was able to um, just fit straight in pretty much. But the second, the second year was so last year was a little bit different because I was playing Adelaide yep. for Adelaide in Adelaide, yep. so I could go to more stuff. So, but I was we would train you know four or five nights a week for soccer, mm-hmm. um, and then but footy would also want me out there once a week, so. If we if I had a day off of soccer, I wasn't it wasn't really a day off. Yeah. Because I then went to footy, and I didn't want to not train, not run, not do anything because I wanted to get picked for the mm. team. So I didn't really have a chance to rest or like you know chill out. It was just huge um, for cross coaches. Which is massive, yeah. It mm. made it really difficult mentally and physically. Um, I just. Yeah. Sorry, where is the overlap? In um, what parts of the season is there overlapping between the soccer? So the, the whole season um, of the soccer goes from November, or October maybe, till the end of January. And the footy starts mid-February, or start of February, goes to the end of March. So pretty much for the pre-season of the footy, I'm in-season for the soccer. Yeah, right. So they're working hard during pre-season when I'm in-season trying to maintain, you yeah. know, trying to be ready for a game on the weekend yeah. when also going to footy training and doing extra conditioning because they're in pre-season. Yeah. So and that's the hardest time that we're thinking about. Mm. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's pretty full on for your workloads. Mm. Do you get monitored? Do you use catapults this morning? Um, well, they were trying to monitor me as much as possible. Uh, and when I did go to footy, it was obviously altered a little bit because they knew that I'd obviously been training every day and whatever else. So it was um, modified a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just, just mentally, like, yeah. not... You know, every night having to be out going in and and going to training like this one night, I didn't have soccer and I didn't have footy. It was like the perfect night, and I was so excited to just stay home, do nothing, and then I was made to go and do an appearance for soccer. And it's just like, although I wasn't physically anything, I still had to put the shirt on, I still had to go outside, I still had to get in my car and drive somewhere, <coughs> and you know, try and lift myself up and do these yeah. rounds like. So no mental rest. No yeah. mental rest. No. Like just even, you know, there's little things like being at home with your, enjoying the meal with your family for once or sitting on the couch and watching the TV with your family. Like that does so much when you don't even realise it mm-hmm. until you never do it. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, this is my chance yep. to do it. And I didn't get that chance. So it was really tough. But um, they the two clubs did work together pretty well to like manage what I was doing yep. and recovery and, and all that stuff. But... Yeah, then when I went into footy, it was it's just different because fitness for soccer is so fit, different than fitness for footy. How so? In the way that, in the <laughs> way that for soccer, yeah. like as a defender, you know, I might be jogging around here watching my teammates up front do their thing, then counter, maybe I'll do a sprint to the end, short, sharp stuff, um, sprinting here, going with the striker there, you know, defending, then 
go, okay, go, okay. So you defend a striker? Yeah, I'm a defender. Of one specific player, or is it more like a team Oh, defense? just like game team defense. Defense. Game plan, bro. Like, so you, like, because we have zones yeah. or... Yeah, so yeah okay. thing. We're defending, yeah, I'm a central defender, but I defend whoever kind of comes... So in your zone. To me. I don't have a player that I follow. Yeah. yeah. Um, because you want to keep your sort of structure. Yeah, like so much. Yeah. <laughs> a bit sucker. Um, yeah. So and then I go into footy, and it's longer running. So it's um, so I'm forward in footy. Yep. So there's more confusing stuff. But forward in footy, okay. You're making a lead there. You don't get the ball. You come back. You make another lead. Maybe it comes to you, but you fumble, and then someone gets it, and you've got to lay a tackle. And then you've got to get up off the ground, try and get the ball again, give a hand. But it's just like go, go, go all the time mm-hmm. and you don't really get that chance to jog back to your position no. unless the ball's at the other side. So, and their, their um, physical training for footy is long, consistent long running training. Sort of so, yeah. yeah, we would do, I mean, we would do some weeks we would do a block of like um, the shorter stuff and then other weeks we would do the longer stuff. Yeah. So it's just like mm-hmm. a huge mix and we just don't really do that in soccer. We did soccer's mm-hmm. more like the short, sharp, high intensity, 3v3, go for four minutes or whatever type thing yeah. um, and maybe some longer like sprints but does the offside rule have a big play in that because obviously you can't you now I don't completely understand the offside rule, <laughs> it's the boss of the offside rule. <laughs> so does the offside rule play an effect on how you would train for soccer versus football because obviously with footy you can your player can be down there and you can be down here it doesn't really matter you can mm. still get the ball mm. but soccer would be called offside yeah so does it matter the way you train would it be is that why there's more sprinting involved because you can't Sort of lag behind in soccer. How does it work? Is there an, is there a difference there? Um, I mean, yeah. If if you know soccer and you know how to play it, you'll know that there's like p- positions that you have to keep mm. for your team. And yep. obviously, you can't be offside, so you'd need to make sure that you are in a position where you can get. So the ball. offside rule applies to strikers, not defenders. The way the way I would say it, right? So I'm a striker, Jen's a defender. So Jen basically her and her like teammates would determine where that offside line is. So for me as a striker, I can't be anywhere closer to goals between like Jen's line and the goals. So it's up to the defense to it's set up it. The defense to set it. Mm-hmm. So like we we I play old men's teams and they got offside line like they're now half. <laughs> so you know it depends on that. So for, it's, I would be saying from that perspective, it's probably more of a strikers thing with the explosive speed to try and break that line where like your defenders here and you're gonna try and break that line to get past them. Yeah. Rather than being. Defenders job, like defender would know usually where they are in space. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like the short sprint, the capacity is has to be there. But in regards to being there for the offside rule, I wouldn't say so. Yeah. Personally, from from what I would look at things, mm-hmm. you know, like you're going to be sprinting no matter what, whether your defender's offside or onside. Yeah. 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 Or you're a striker. I've got a science question for you. I don't know how you go with answering. I reckon you'd be able to do it pretty well. So breakdown of ATP. Mm-hmm, I know where you're going with this. So lactic acid aerobic compared to uh, soccer versus football. Uh, ATP much more in in soccer. Um, at like aerobic, far greater in footy. So you go over far greater base. Also depends on position specific. Um, so go like from a very base perspective, distance is covered. Position wise, you know midfielders in soccer, good midfielders might cover nine to eleven k's in a game. Good midfielders in footy might cover upwards of 15. 15, well, we're talking about FLW, 15 to, to 20 maybe. You said the clubs work together. Mm-hmm. How much do they work together in regards to here's Jenna's load in season of soccer? Did they monitor that? And then I would convey it to the, the footy, which is like here's Jenna's load that we want to be doing pre season, you know, that kind of management. Because you're talking two different S&C teams. Mm. You may be talking two different, completely different styles. Yeah. Um... Managed in the way of... From what you know. Yeah, well, well, because the soccer doesn't have the same resources as footy. So footy, we wear GPS training every day mm-hmm. and in games. Um, soccer, we don't. Um, so I, I'm just lucky that I have my own GPS device so I could get the data off that. You know, so you wear that or, at soccer? Yeah, yeah, or, you know, use my watch at training, be like, yep, did this much of training today. Um, and sort of just tell them, keep them in the loop so that they know. Mm. Um, and then in regards to working together, it was more like, okay, um, you know, there was a couple of weeks where I took the night off soccer and was at footy sort of thing. So it was working together that way, mm. sort of like, okay, um, yep, she can go there today or she can go here today. Yeah, yeah. Obviously I was in soccer, so that was my yeah. priority. 
Um, but it was just trying to get as much footy in, like you know, as I could. As you can manage. Yeah, yeah definitely. Was um was it difficult for you then when you, the mental side of things? Um, difficulty in like switching from. For me, for me, it's like okay, I'm in season for one. I've got to realise that my next training might be a preseason once a week for football. Mm. Like getting into that mindset to, to switch and, and what intensity to work at, I'll be saying, in, mm. in the session. Or is it just kind of comes naturally? Um, I think it's, it's, they're just so different in the mm. environments and I guess obviously the sport, the people. So it is a specific different, yeah. like differential of when you can get. So when I'm at footy, I know I'm at footy. I know what I'm going to be required to do. I know what I have to do. Um, I know what I'm going to be doing type thing. And then when I'm at soccer, it's different. So, okay, I'm here. We're going to work on this today sort of thing. So um, it wasn't really hard to, to, to modify, transition, transition over. Transition. Yeah, okay. um, because I love both sports so much that, you know, I was really excited going to footy. I was really excited being able to... Um, go to pre-season more than I did the year before and, and be around the girls more and, and everything. And, and obviously that excites me because they have so much resources and, you know, the club the club there is equivalent to European soccer giants like Borussia Dortmund and, yep. and PSG and all that. Like, the facilities are the same there. And, you know, so why wouldn't I enjoy having... Four massages, massage me, or you know, whatever else. Yeah, anyway, would you know? So, yeah. so like, there's no wonder why that's such a great environment for being in, and, and why I enjoy it so much. Mm. Because that's what every elite athlete wants. You yeah, know, they yeah. want the best of the best. And um, unfortunately, you know, not even the men's soccer team here, at Leeds United, they didn't even have what we had, sort of thing. So, yeah. let alone the women. So, um, and you know, basketball. So it it just just goes to show you know that how how good it can money be. Money talks. Money, money talks. Money yeah. Money is, yeah. Is what you're saying. So, yeah. question about your how you uh, deal with your workload on a personal level. So, you know, you're training and playing soccer. You're training really hard for footy in that overlap period. Mm-hmm. What are you doing away from the field? When you go home, what are you doing? Are you just mm-hmm. you know eating crap and vegging out, watching TV, or are you doing extra work on your own to recover? Um, big recovery focus. Obviously, I'm not vegging out on shit and eating crap. Um, but I do have to watch what I eat, obviously. Yep. Um, I have to make sure I have an, a fuel, enough fuel. Um, do you track that? No. no I just... In, just What's your fuel? Sort of thing. What's your... Like, your go- do you have go-to <laughs> meal? Or? Say shark chips. Got <laughs> <laughs> a massive Not stash. shark chips. <laughs> High protein, good fats. Um, that they would actually be really like nutritional, but yeah. that's gross. Anyway, um, so big focus on like obviously like a protein and a carb at dinner. Um, my parents cooked for me, so I'm lucky. But personal like, chefs um, as well. Um, nice. I, and I am, I am not taking that for granted after my experiences overseas. That is for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, just potatoes. Um, Chicken, steaks, your rices. Um, they just keep it pretty simple. But, Physically, um, do you do? Do you go for other massage? Do you do yoga? Do you do other things at home? Stretch so sessions. We have um, we have a massage once a week that we can have outside of um, like so like a booked in massage mm-hmm. for footy. This is for mm-hmm. footy, um, and we go in and we can have half an hour, um, and that's just like pure relaxation time. So no phones. You know, you can chat whatever. There's nice calming music on and you just like you know nice. like just chill out a bit um, and that's really nice um, obviously we've got ice baths there so every session you're in the ice baths after every session you're in the ice bath um, what's colder can... ice bath or the stream in Iceland oh I don't know I'm, I'm thinking of the tough questions I think the ice bath yeah yeah it's like oh actually probably the stream the ice okay. bath I think is about 12 degrees yeah and the stream definitely does not Okay. Um, but and, and whenever I've got a spare minute as well so even if we're not training for footy um, I'm trying to get because we can access the club at whatever time we want the footy club which is really good um, so I can go and get an ice bath or have an ice bath you know if I want extra yep. sort of thing so that stretching you know your skin decompression um, rolling 
Is there anything you hate doing Lego? Rolling. Hate doing rolling. Rolling? Yeah, yeah but I'm it's rolling. so good. Yeah. Like, you can't not foam roll, but I hate doing it. So that's a, that's a struggle. Mm. Mm. What's your bet? Like, do you have a do you have a binge? Like, what if you're going out? Yeah, friends, and you're like, you know mm. what? Doing it. Favorite. Going nuts. As in food. Yep. Anything. Food or drinks. Um, I I love a good like cheese platter. So oh. cheese, the dips, yeah. the meats. That would be perfect. Would for, you have like a wine with it? You're not really much of a drinker. Um, yeah, we we'll have a wine or a beer or a cider. Um, mm. but in season when we have footy, we we have drinking bands. So good, good to hear. And I don't really, I don't really drink much anyway. And, yeah. Um, so. Do you have um, a favourite cheese? We can um, talk on this. Yeah, we can talk on this. Um, <laughs> can't go past a nice camembert. Of course. Um, yeah. You a fan of the blue? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't. That's the one thing I can't do. Does it remind you too much of shark chips? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too many bad memories. <laughs> An aftertaste. Ugh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that cheese platter or like, you know, pizza's always good. Yeah. So, um, Have you ever tried a triple brie? No, but that sounds boring. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Sounds well, I think I was at the, um, I reckon it was East End Cellars, I reckon they mm. had there. And I went there and looked at the fancy bitch sometimes. <laughs> and I went there <laughs> very rarely, <laughs> and I went there, and it was um, wine, and they have like the platter, right? And this was like expensive platter, mm. and I was like, "Why is it so expensive?" And it was regular shit, and then I saw right at the bottom was like triple brie. And I was like, "Fuck yeah!" And you know what? It is worth the money. I can still taste it in my mouth. Yeah. And this oh is about gosh. eight months ago. Yeah, definitely. If Go to know. say cheese in the middle of um, Central Market. Uh, yep, yep. Anything, any cheese you can imagine is sitting there. Sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> triple, triple brie. Yeah. If you can get it there, uh, I'd, I'd do it. Check it out. What about, like, do you have any, like, drinks that you go, like, my, you're my, okay, put, when I say drinks, I mean, like, alcohol, doesn't mean alcohol. Mm. My latest one, it, it seems to have been, like, the last six weeks, it's my new thing, is a dark chocolate mocha from St. Louis. <laughs> go oh. there, and mm. it's like, they, they make, you know, you coffee mocha, mm. and put a bit of dark chocolate in it. And around that, and it's chocolate on the bottom. It comes with a biscuit, and then what I do is get the biscuit, put the biscuit on top of the, the froth, and the biscuit sinks in the froth a bit. The bottom of it gets nice and like moist from the chocolate. Then you scoop it out when you got the froth and the biscuit. It's a bit soft and a bit crunchy in the middle, and that's how you start. Oh my god! <laughs> you really thought about this? I don't know. <laughs> like I don't. Wow. Write down the procedures and how to put do it. Do. Put it in a spreadsheet. It's how I, was I, I it. it painted the picture, and I felt yeah. like yeah. I was yeah. eating I it as well. Taste so coffee, chocolate. I'm a storyteller, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's yeah. my drink. What's your drink? Um. I don't have any. I can't beat that. I can't beat that. No. <laughs> it's been, like I said, this has been this winter. Last winter, it wasn't, that wasn't it. Yeah. This winter is definitely it. That's it. Oh, yeah. No, nah, my drink is coffee. Yeah. Yeah. What's your, hang on. You should know this. Extra hot. Mm. Extra hot. Cap. Yeah. Really? Extra hot yeah. skin cap. Really? Because if yeah. it's not extra hot, I drink it within 30 seconds. And I'm like, you don't enjoy I it. haven't enjoyed it. <laughs> like, I've just drunk it because I don't like drinking, like, lukewarm any less temperature of coffee. Right. So, Appar like, gone. Apparently, the ideal temperature of coffee is like 60 or 65 degrees Celsius, which means you better drink it without burning your mouth. And that's how I like, I personally like to drink it because I don't like holding on to things for too long. Of everybody here yeah. who would know what temperature is best for coffee, is it you? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the walk coming out. Yeah, it's the <laughs> yeah. I feel like I like, like I never, I never used to drink coffee. Never. Yeah. Right? I was always like, nah. White tea, green tea, that's yeah. my thing. All right? And then I don't even know what started. It might have been when I was working in the city. I mm -hmm. see coffee shops around. I started and I started like, I was like, no, no. I'm just going to have espresso. It's no milk. All right? Fit bitch. Mm -hmm. Then I went from there into, you know, boring fit bitch. Flat white. And then from there into like lattes. And then now my one is, a, my coffee now is double shot latte. Oh, yeah. Yours is a extra hot skinny cap. Mm -hmm. Nerf, no, coconut latte. Coconut, coconut latte. yeah, I like a good yeah. coconut yeah. latte. I, I can't get past the coconut, the the, the, the flavour. Yeah? Nah, I can't do it. do it? Nah, I can't. Do you like coconut Almond milk, milk, can't do it. Yeah. Like that substitute yeah. of, yeah, that's really nice. What was that? The cocoa whip, like the vegan, like... Um, Isn't that a yoghurt? That's not the yoghurt, isn't it? It's coconut. Oh, yeah. it's the same thing. Is it? Same thing, yeah. And put that in your coffee. Yeah. No, no, no. Just like oh. in like an acai bowl thing. Oh. Yeah. No, no. I've never. I've Anything never, cocoa, I also like. Yeah. yeah. I'm a cocoa fan. Mm. Yeah. What about coconut chocolate? I go with yes. 
Yes, you're yeah. doing it right now. Mm. <laughs> I wish we had this where we had the ability to be like, we know you like her. Here's your chocolate Oh chocolate. my god, that would be so good. If we had that ability, it would be so good. Best interview ever. <laughs> now I'm upset. Hey, sponsorship. Yeah, hey. I was actually like, when you, because I saw your text like, hey, do I need to bring anything, right? And I saw it very late. <laughs> That's when I went back. But I was like, I was thinking about it. I should have asked to bring the guitar. Yeah. I did consider that. I said, maybe we should get her to sing yeah. the last thing. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm already getting sweaty hands thinking about it. Like, that's just... Can you do acapella? Hell no. 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 <laughs> you can beatbox. I can beatbox. <laughs> no, I can't beatbox, but I could, I, you could try. I could try and beatbox. <laughs> so, back on, so, back on what we wanted to talk about earlier, in what you look for in coaches. Mm-hmm. So, really, I'm just trying to write back to so yeah. mochas and coffee. Mm-hmm. Coaches, coach. right? Because yeah. mm-hmm. different flavors of each. Let's tie in on this. Right. So <laughs> when when you obviously you've had a lot of different coaches, different coaching styles, different whatever. What do you look for in coaches then when you're deciding on a team or, or that's going to get the best out of you as a player? Um. Yeah, I've had my fair share, and yeah. I feel like I've learned what not to do as a coach from the poor coaches that I've yeah. had. Um, which is a great asset to me because then now that I coach young girls, like I know, no, mm-hmm. I now know what not to do type thing, um, and I know the best ways that I can sort of tap into them and try and get them to learn. So from my cloud of coaches that I've had, I really like can take those skills off them, and mm-hmm. I actually quite like coaching. Um, but I like um, I obviously like a coach who is knows their authority so mm-hmm. you know they're the coach what they say goes they set the precedences they mm-hmm. set all the standards um obviously having good knowledge as well is yep. good um i like having a good relationship with my coach so i like you mm-hmm. know being able to go up and speak to them i've had coaches where i felt like i can't go and speak to them and obviously you're not getting the best out of yourself as an athlete you're not um in the best headspace i guess if you're feeling a bit scared or apprehensive um so that's never good mm-hmm. so um always like to be able to speak to my coach and yeah, have a good relationship, go out for coffee or whatever and talk about things, um, raise issues, whatever. Um, Cause at the end of the day, you know, if you can't communicate, if you can't get that through, then you're not going to be successful. You're not mm-hmm. going to fix anything that's wrong. You're not going to strengthen anything that we've got that's good. Um, so yeah, that's more of those things. And so I, I obviously I also need a coach that wants the best out of me and, mm-hmm. you know, is willing to help me get to where I want to be or do what I want to do or get better or, you know, those sort of things. So. Do you like to be pushed? Like if you're doing, if you're having a lazy day or you're a bit off on the game, do you like a coach to pull you up on it and push you to be better? Or do you like, like in front of everyone or would you prefer them to take you to a side in their office, have a quiet word to you, ask you about what's going on? Which way do you like to go about it? Um, I, s- I certainly like being accountable for my performance and what I'm doing. So obviously I like praise when I'm doing well. I like I'm a confidence player as well. So obviously if you're doing something well, then hearing that you're doing it well from the coach is obviously a good thing. Mm-hmm. So those are good. And, 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 and yeah, when you need to be held accountable for not chasing the player or something like that, it wouldn't so much come from a coach. It would come from my teammates. Um, okay. And that's what I would want out of the team. I would want someone to tell me to get back quicker mm-hmm. or um, play this ball next time or whatever like the coach is, is, I would like feedback from the coach, like how can I get better, this and that, but um, in terms of pulling me up on things and, and whatnot, I would expect that from my teammates. And so I'd, you prefer the coach to be more of like a strategist? Yeah. And, and, then, and then the team comes Because if, if you've got a coach that's yelling at you and like abusing you, like that's not going to make you feel very nice, is it? So I'd go about <laughs> it in a good way. But... No, I'm talking to you. Go about it. Go just yeah. go about it in a good way because you're also dealing with females. Like, boys might be different. They might respond better to smacking <laughs> across the head. You know, we got Murphy's stories. All right, Murphy's yeah, stories. Not so much, dude. Like, I think <laughs> everyone's, like, I guess the social point of view on men's sport is we're all rough, rugged, tough we're men. We're very sensitive. We're a very sensitive bunch of people. <laughs> okay. And you do have some of the boys that just, they don't care if they get ring out in front of everyone they just that's how they respond yeah i think that's where our coach joey has done really well is he knows i think even like the whole coaching staff we know our players on a deeper level than just as a, an athlete mm. so we know okay with one player you can crack the shit to them in front yeah. of everyone they go Fuck, i'm going to lift myself mm. up and play better mm. the next player after training let's have a talk or training's finished mm-hmm. we have a quick yeah. word shut the door and just quietly talk about things that's how they lift up uh, if you do the other way around for each player 
you're going to get nothing mm-hmm. out of it. Yeah, them. And, and that's the way it should be. The coaches should know, yeah. each player should know how that they respond so that they can deal, in it, deal with it in a good way. And that's something that I've definitely learned as well in, in that you every person is different and you can't just keep yelling at someone because, you know, everyone's going to respond, like you said, differently. So yeah. um, that's, that's one of the things that a good coach has. Well, so. Who's been the best coach that you've had then? In across any sport, <coughs> cricket, soccer, cricket. football, whatever sport. Like, who's been the best coach and why? Um, for that person. Uh, I really liked working with Ross. Um, Ross Alisi. Ross Alisi. He was a good. He was good. He knew what he wanted. He was knowledgeable. He kept you accountable. Um, there was a couple of things that might have been questionable, but um, he got the most out of me at that age and was able to about me the most I believe so in that respect um, him I um, also loved working with Ray Dower at Canberra United she was more on a personal friendship yep. level yep. Um, and, and so that was easy to get along with her um, so Ray was a premiership coach wasn't he? Yeah. yeah 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 uh, Aloisi he, he's an ex-player of his, yep. of his player right mm-hmm. yeah okay yep. and he's actually a good coach as well yeah yeah he's he got was, a, he's got a brother he's, who scored the goal? So his brother also played. I'm thinking his the brother. brother yeah, but yes. he, was a, he also a great player. Like, they're both good players. Yeah, they're yeah. both great yeah. players. Yeah, but the one you're thinking of, from what I think, is the one that scored the goal and then ran shirtless across the sideline. That's his brother. Yeah, that's his brother. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who's also a coach? Where's, where's yeah, the other coaching? They're both coaching at Brisbane Royal. They're both, both head coaching assistant yeah. coach. Yeah. 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 Men's team. Yeah. 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 And the last one. We've just been most recent, Beck got out. She's a police officer, so mm. she's got that authority behind her. She knows how to communicate. She knows how to talk. She knows how to, um, she knows when to be serious, when to be humorous, mm. um, had good knowledge as well, helped me, yeah. confidence, um, was connected with us on, on a good level as well. So I'm pretty sure that's the other one. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. And yeah. she's left now, hasn't she? Yeah, Go back to yeah, she's police. Gone. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, okay. I had something. It was there. It's gone. <laughs> I'm happy there. What about um, what about teams and you played in? What did you find from your from from teams and you played in those like high performance teams? What was the best qualities or qualities that you found, you know, in, within that team that helped them stay at that level? And then team teams you played in, so maybe the Norwegian team we talked about that already, that kind of didn't have that. What do you look for in the teams and that or not not what you look for, but what are attributes of the teams that have been the high performance? Obviously, Crows team won the Northern Premiership, right? Mm-hmm. That may not be the team, right? You were part of that team, yeah? Mm-hmm. The Premiership team? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. We'll yep. um, that was my question. Yeah, I, <laughs> <Did you? laughs> I can't really go past the eliteness and the professionalism of that Crows team. Yep. The environment is something so different to what I've ever really experienced in soccer. Mm-hmm. It's, Everyone's family, everyone's a sister, um, everyone's there for the same goal. Everyone's working on themselves to better themselves to get to that goal. Nobody's a passenger, nobody is a... And if they are, they're called out yeah. and they've got to lift their game. Um, you know, we've had instances where girls have been told, like, you need to lift your game and they've stepped out in front of the whole group and apologised and said, like, I'm going to lift my game. Like, that's where you build respect for each mm. other. That's where you build an elite environment, the culture, we're all there for the one goal, we've all got each other's backs, like I'm not saying that that doesn't happen in soccer, mm-hmm. I'm just saying it happens so much more and it's yep. so much more involved in footy for some reason, I don't know, it's just the culture of the two different sports and that's what I love being a part of um, as, an, as a professional athlete um, and, and, and in soccer it's a little bit different, it's, it is a team sport but I feel like some, <coughs> there are players that yep. are not playing it. it for the team type yep. thing whereas I just know that everyone's playing for the team yep. if we like it's just they're just second to none yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and but yeah worst one will obviously be that well, Norwegian team, team. Yeah. yeah I'm going to name them um, it's interesting because I, had a, I did an interview with Chips before she left mm-hmm. and she mentioned the number one thing in the high performance teams that she's had professionalism mm. and she mentioned Ross as a great as a great coach mm. as well so we're gonna try and get Ross on sometime. <laughs> that's, that's a plan. Shit. Cool. <laughs> so I've got to bring it back to I love success, I love the top of success, and you obviously experienced that in 2017, the 16 yeah. 17 yeah. season. Um, so you're not too far away. 
um, where you won the WA AFLW Championship, mm -hmm. Premiership, you call it Premiership, don't you? Yeah. How was it? Talk us through that. Uh, oh, amazing. Um, it's such a special thing to think about that year I won the very first Premiership. Yeah, because it was the first, of course, yeah. And, yeah, I just... I just remember being so nervous, so <laughs> nervous before the game, like shitting my pants nervous, like never, never had these nerves before. Um, and I was really, really, really struggling to um, contain my thoughts. And this one, I just remember, because I've been in finals before, or, or like, you know, high pressure games, games where you've thought about the end result and you're like, yep, yeah, we're going to win. Um, gonna, I'm thinking about partying after, I'm thinking about, you know, the celebrations, how great it's going to be. Cheese platters. <laughs> Cheese platters for days and... Shark chips. Shark chips. <laughs> and you haven't got there yet. And this, this one, this grand final, I like, and so many times I thought about that and we never got there. So either we lost or, you mm. know, whatever else, like the semi-final for Canberra, you know, I was like, we got this, we got this in the bag, like it's happening, you know. And we didn't end up winning. And mm. this grand final, I was so adamant of changing my mindset in, in thinking that I have to stay in the moment. I cannot mm. for one second think about holding a premiership medal or holding or wearing a premiership ring or being a premiership player. I cannot think about that because I haven't got there yet. Mm. I have to be in the moment. I have to play each quarter as it comes, play footy, um, do what you can, work as hard as you've ever worked before, and the result will come. So that's the one thing that I just learned from um, being in that premiership game is that you just cannot dwell on what could happen because it's a it's just a could like it it's not even happened yet and you can't Jeez, think about that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and when you win, it's so much better to enjoy that moment mm -hmm. after you've finally won. Like you've actually won. You're there. You can make most of it. You can be happy. You can celebrate. But you can't do that until you've got it. Yeah. Yeah. Were you a starter? Mm -hmm. Yep. So what's it like walking out there? Mm -hmm. The siren's about to go for the centre bounce. No, I'm going to see that. Describe that. Feeling. <laughs> yeah. Is it, have the nerves at that point? Have the nerves gone? Are they gone now? It's business time, or are you still? Because um, you, you said you're a forward, so you're not yeah. even the centre bouncer. You're yeah. Back yeah. in the forward line. So when I got my first touch, that's when it was okay. That's when it settled yep. down. Um, when the siren went, yeah, I was still looking around. There was like fifteen thousand people there, and it was just like. Is that the most you played in front? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. So it's pretty cool. But um, who who was your direct opponent? Oh, I don't even remember actually. Not important anymore. No, no not important. They lost. Like, did you yeah. rough them up? <laughs> you like, you know, how they up? Yeah, we do a bit of that, yeah. and it was grand final, so it was emotions running high. But yeah. I was, yeah, I was still really nervous. But the awesome thing was, we won the centre clearance, and um, we scored within sixty seconds. And did you score? No, I didn't score, yeah. but. We got the clearance and it came out to um, one of our other forwards mm -hmm. and yeah, I think something happened, something happened and she ran around, she snapped this goal from a really tight angle and it was obviously the first goal of the game and that was just wicked. That was mm -hmm. a sick start to yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah. We just kicked the goal six seconds in, we're all high but and that was when it was like, almost take a breath we're here yeah. now, yeah. Yep. we're on, we can do this and that's kind of when... How did you play that game? game? Um, Probably not as good as I would want it to. Um, I think that I think that the emotions did mm. get a little bit, a little bit yeah. to you. But um, I still, I'm, I'm happy to have played my part. And, yeah. Of um, what was your like favorite? Like when you think about the game moment within the game that you're like, that's my moment. Like that's oh, I remember. Oh, the end. That. The siren. Can't can't say the siren. <laughs> can't say the siren. The siren. That's, that's, that's not in the game. game. That's the end of the game. That's the, did you oh, kick a goal at all in the game? Did you take no, a mark, no, you I put someone down, down, tackle? Did you celebrate a goal really, really well? You know? Well, it was probably the first goal. <laughs> we celebrated that goal hard. First, yeah. Second, yeah. Yeah. first, first, first and the last. Yeah. Yeah. No. When did you know you'd won? We, well, we didn't. We were, they were six points behind. Yeah. Which okay. so give, give, us a, give us a story. Or give, I know kind of what happened. All right? Give them a story. Yeah. Um, them story. Okay, so... Which one lines? Brisbane Lions, yeah, we played them. Um, I think, oh, t to be honest, the scores at each quarter were like a bit grey on. They were very close. Um, they were very close. In it's low scoring in AFLW, so when mm -hmm. you score a goal, it's a massive thing. If you give away a fifty and they score a goal, like goals are hard to come by. Mm -hmm. um, so doing that sort of stuff is is difficult. Anyway, I just remember, 
I, yeah, I honestly don't know if we were up or down yeah. at, at quarter, half time, three quarter time. Um, I think we were up at three quarter time and we went into it going, you know, obviously this is the last quarter of yeah, the season. Yeah. You know, those type of speeches where you've just got to give it all your all or nothing. Yeah. Um, and the, we, um, it was, it was tied. Scores were tied at some point in the game, I think. And then we scored a goal and then we were six points in front. Actually, we might have been one or two points in front. Then we scored a goal then we were eight points in front. Then they scored a couple of points. So, you know, they've missed a couple of goals. So we're going deep breaths here. Um, so they're only a goal behind now. I'm feeling <laughs> They're only a goal behind and it's like the last, oh, there's like less than a minute to go. So it's what we'll call red time or red yeah. zone. Um, and runners running out, telling us all that message. And I'm like, like going like, like, I'm like, my head's just like, I can't believe like what, have the intensity of what this last mm-hmm. like minute is. Yeah. And um, yeah. I just remember yeah. being yelled yeah. at from the sideline. <laughs> get back like everyone get back in defense like so i'm like oh my god like i'm back here back in the moment sprint back sprint back sprint back trying to help out defenders and um and then the ball i I, you've probably not seen this this last little bit but the ball rebounds out we we clear it out one of them collects it puts it back into the 50 it's a contest nobody marks it but aaron phillips picks up the ball and is tackled, and then the siren goes. So all they had to do was mark that ball, Jeez. and they would have had a kick on ball, and it would have been even. Yeah. But they didn't mark it, and Aaron got tackled with the ball, and there's a bit of controversy about whether she was holding the ball or not. Mm-hmm. Um, from Brisbane. Obviously. From Brisbane, in my opinion. Obviously. In my opinion, it wasn't. She didn't have enough prior chance to get rid of the ball. And then the siren went, obviously. Um, and then, because I'd rushed back to help out the defenders. So I was like right near the ball when mm. the siren went and I was just remember jumping and jumping on all my teammates and screaming <laughs> and cheering and it was just, yeah, it was great. It was great. So I was going to ask, did you feel the same pressure as a, a forward than a back would? And obviously you would have because you were actually a back at that point. Mm. Um, not so much. Not so much. No, so not. I was a forward <clears throat> just going back and just putting yeah, the numbers yeah. back in yeah, trying yeah. to help out whatever way I can um, but I've been playing a little bit of halfback so I've been playing a little bit of defending in footy and I can now see the difference yeah, yeah. between the two and mm-hmm. you know learning the different skills of the different positions and the pressure and, mm-hmm. and whatever else so if I was a defender at that moment in time I, yeah it would have been <laughs> because that's your stressing. job that's your job yeah. Yeah. and your job is kick yeah. goals but yeah. you know, come back and help us out we need someone to do some mapping right yeah. Yeah. and their job is like we're doing the, we're doing the groundwork yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's <laughs> I think I, I just I, like that moment. Then when you were describing our story, mm. it, I feel it was at the moment when I was describing my mock up, the whole room just went silent. And we were and really everyone's listening to everyone's it. To I could feel it. I could taste it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Same, same thing. Same thing. Mocha, Very similar. Wing, <laughs> same Regular mock are the same way. Yeah. First AFL Dummy Premiership ever. Same, <laughs> no, I'm same. kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I don't mean that. Have you got like? Have you got like? Because you got a ring, didn't you? What is a ring? Yeah. Do you get to keep your premiership guernsey? Like, do you have any like yeah, memorabilia? Yeah. Like, do you have like a like a Jenna success room at home? You walk in and it's just Jenna everywhere. <laughs> um, maybe one day I'll have like a little shrine room. Yeah. I, I've got you know, obviously so many trophies and guernseys and me- like yeah, yeah. memorabilia that I could probably make a nice little room and that yeah. would be really cool. That would be really um, cool. But I do have a little. Sh- Charge the angels fee to get in, make money off your parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to come in? Yeah. Um, I do have a little shrine that I built. Um, for my successful year of 2016 slash 17 when we won because when I was in Iceland we actually won the premiership there as well we won the championship so that was that was amazing Um, so I've got my championship medal there next to my um, AFLW premiership Mm -hmm. got the ring sitting up there got my grand final match worn boots that I Uh, they were a new pair yeah yeah. worn them in the grand final never gonna wear them again they've Mm. still got the grass blades on the bottom (laughs) I'm just imagining I'm imagining them in like a perspex box (laughs) I would need one of them because they're getting a bit dusty but they're just sitting on top of the shelf but they're the grand final boots that I'll never wear again and um, and yeah I've got the cut out from the advertiser of the first AFLW premiership and 
And all that. Has a cover photo yeah. for a while there. Mm-hmm. The, the mm-hmm. yeah, the cover photo on to, on the gram or something. Gram bad yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely on the gram. I remember yeah. I was watching on the on the TV. I you know, I put it on my gram as well. Everyone's grabbing it. Mm-hmm. So it's big. It's a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever put the ring on? Just like. Just sit there in silence. Just look at it. Sometimes, just yeah. Stroke Do you have friends from Brisbane? You ever just put it on and snap them? Like Snapchat? Remember this day? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wouldn't is do that, it. Is that not allowed? I wouldn't do it. Yeah. No, it's mine. It's mine. Do, it's you mine. Have, do, do you have friends on the teams? Like, are there other teams? Yeah. yeah. No, like, a couple of them. Yeah. Banter? Is there like team banter? Like in the gym, we get banter all the time. Mm. Right? Um, oh, it's it's more kind of more profesh. No, 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 there's definitely banter, but, yeah. um, you know, there's definitely sledging, there's definitely chat. Off field? On field. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And to, to be honest, sometimes people cross the line, which I don't really like, I don't yep. really respect that, and I think that you can, you know, bump someone as much as you like, but, you know, there's no need to get personal or anything yeah, like yeah. that, so I think some people don't really have um, that good respect. How do you respond to that then? And you just go... Keep you going. Well, are you like, are you like, I'll take you down then? You just don't, I just don't say anything. If someone says something that offends me, I'm just like, walk away. Right. I've never, thankfully, thankfully I haven't. Yeah. Um, But if that was. Would you you go a little bit harder and tackle? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, where'd you put them down and let them know? Gotcha. (laughs) (laughs) Say it again. Did you just say it before? Yeah. Who was I talking about? I was talking about the other. Who was it? Someone else from one of the three teams. And they were in a similar situation. Yeah. You know, where it was like bad to the stage and I was like, you seriously don't put them down and be like, this is going to be on the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you got that. Yeah. Oh, well. No, okay. I'm not a, I'm not a, like a, I don't really mouth off much. Mm. Like, again, like, there's two different types of people. Yeah, of course. There's one that so. mouths off and there's one that, ones that don't. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really, like, Oh, actually, I just don't think I'm witty enough to come up with something. <laughs> 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 I just don't say anything. <laughs> I look, yeah. I talk to you on the field. Mm. And one of my favourite moments ever was, I'm not like, I don't try and go offensive, nothing mm. rude, mm. just I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah. And then I do it. All right. Jordan. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, nowhere near that level, nowhere near that level. Like, my favourite moment ever for my amateur soccer career was I had a guy on me and I thought, you know, I was taller than him, I was bigger than him, and I said to him when he started, I was up front, and so I'm a striker, and he's a defender, and I said to him, I'm going to score on you today. And he was like, I scored on him and I said, I warned you, I'm going to do it again. And I scored him a second time, <laughs> right? And I said to him, don't let me get a third because you're going to get taken off his first half. Yeah. Don't let me get a third. And he's like, eh, and he went off me, scored a third. Next thing I know, whistle blew and I'm like, that's you, mate. And they took him off. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it, was my, like, it was my greatest moment. So <laughs> it's it's like, it was, and I've never done it since. Like, every time I was like, nah, I said to that last week, I was like, I'm gonna put a bottom corner, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I tried. <laughs> so I'm definitely that type of player. So yes, but I think one more break. You got a bit of, you got a bit of time to chat. Mm-hmm. You got time? I got, I got some time. You got some time? I got some time. You got some time. You got right. <laughs> some time. <laughs> we, we are back here with gentlemen for me. We are in hour number three. I reckon this is. That'd be, yeah. Some of like that. So. All right. It's been, chatting. it's been great chatting. We talked a lot about athletic gen, right? We talked a bit about personal gen. Musical we talked gen. a lot about musical gen. Mm. And what has always, not interested me, it's not like an interest of mine. I don't have a gen shrine at home, right? But like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> I don't yet. <laughs> Creepo. Um, is is, is the, the, the completely separate, like, you're very creative in what you do, right? So the music thing is, is obviously one thing that we see a lot of. And you also own a clothing label, right? So for me, seeing that, like the fire is coming in, um, like that compared to like, ath- like the athlete side of things, is that I don't tend to see a lot of that crossover. You know, either you're all sport or you're all artist. Mm. You know what I mean? Whereas you've got that, that blend of that. You know, so where did that kind of start? The creative side, not just the music, which we talked about before, but like the creativity and the clothing and the logos and whatever, it's like graphic design, all that kind of shit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just had always had a bit of a passion for it, and I started my first label with my one of the, be- well, the best friend that I had at the time, and that went really well. And um, I, I really enjoyed it. I loved, as I said, designing things. I liked running socials and just running the business oh, pretty much. Um, That's most people these days now. And and yeah, unfortunately, we had a bit of falling out and. Um, learned a lot about that experience and 
going into business with friends and mm. what was the business so, clarify that what, um, what did you make what did uh, you clothing, yes. it was yeah. a clothing label um yeah. so female clothing sporty just clothing unisex, unisex, unisex yep. casual gear yep. um and unfortunately yeah just because we had a bit of falling out that that kind of had to pack up and and stop but um I, yeah i was it was disappointing because it's something i was really really passionate about and, and like doing so i looked into um, starting up a, a new company and um, and so that one's that one's all um, up and running now and I have a business partner that um, has been really great in sharing the same ideas and um, it's been cool to have someone um, work with someone that um, sort of like you you haven't been best friends so you don't mm. have like that personal side of things. There's no emotional connection There's no, to business. Yeah, yeah. and that's kind of where it all fell apart yeah. um, the last one where we, it personal kind of got tied in with business and it got really messy and like us we're not mates just, we're just, <laughs> just purely, purely the show yeah. just the show like how did this, the first one start oh just you want to make my brain you want to make my brain yeah, I've always wanted to do that. Like, you want to make a podcast? You want to make a podcast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 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 How else yeah. things happen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's how it was. We had a similar interest and, and yeah, the next day we had it all pretty much ready to go. But, was um, there any YouTube research done? Uh, not really. No? We just straight up. Do, do straight yeah. the deep end. Yeah. Yeah, which, which we learnt a lot from. Um, mm -hmm. But as you do, you know, in all businesses, in life, in everything. So. Uh, did you go in? So there's a lot of people doing... Graphic, I say, I say graphic design, it's not graphic design, it's, it's garmentry mm. and, and clothing. Like a lot of people are doing that. Like, did you design all your own, like, you come up with all the own artwork, all the own designs, all the own labels, like, and you're like, here's what I want to do, mm. and here's my here's my visions, and mm. and then you just got that, like, like let's put it on a singlet, let's put it on a t-shirt. Like, is that how you kind of went with that? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I came up with most of the stuff. I had a friend who was a really, really good graphic designer. She's amazing on the computer, and the stuff that she does is so cool. And I went to her and I said, "Hey, like, could you just do up a couple of logos, whatever? Like, just do what you're kind of feeling. Like, let's see what you can come up with." And she helped me out there, and we used those for a couple of them, mm -hmm. um, which was really cool. And then, um, but yeah, it's just I made made all the final decisions mm -hmm. and and whatnot, and yeah, sort of like seeing what I would like, kind of as well. Because, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't know where you're in clothes yeah, that you make, right. then what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> so. so the current one is the same sort of style of clothing? Yeah, or? pretty yeah. much the same stuff, but we've got a little bit of a different approach to it this time. You know, we're not just another um, business that's just, you know, hey, buy our clothes. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're trying to go in, into, um, into it like that we can relate to our customers, we can relate to our people that we're trying to touch base with. And, and who's, that, who's your demographic? Um, we don't really have a restriction, but I would say like from as young as, you know, 16 to as old as mid thirties, forties, like we're not trying to- I'm still in there. We're most, not, we're not. Most, you know, it's like sponsorship. Sponsorship. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> Is there a chance we can get in on this? <laughs> possibly, possibly. But, What's um, the business name called? It's called The Independent Project. And it's okay. all about being you, not living by the norms, um, not being defined by any sure. other sort of factor in your life, um, sort of just do, making your own path and going down it and like, having a meaning like that just kind of, you know, makes it a little bit more personal with yeah. people and like, oh yeah, like I really feel like that as well. Like maybe I'll support that. That business type things. That's just that, that's the approach that we're trying to go down, and um, yeah, have, have picking and choosing people to sort of represent us as well to get the name out there, and pe people who are good people, and where you know later down the track we have a vision of um, you know hopefully telling our, our ambassador's story through through an item of clothing, which I think is different right, and cool. new. And you got um, a website for it? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Theindependentproject.com.au. <laughs> I did a bit of did a bit of stalking though. It's not hard on, on Jen's gram. Yeah. Who was? I'm gonna have to put it on private. Like, you know, I think I was on gram. Like, <laughs> like when you're talking about the ambassador you've got, mm -hmm. first one you've got, Adelaide boy. Mm -hmm. Well, originally not. Came to Adelaide for a bit. Mm -hmm. Now back. Mm -hmm. Who was that? That's Tarek Elrich. Who was that? Um, yeah, Tarek. He's a great bloke. Um, really 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 awesome guy and great soccer player as well played with uh, Western Sydney Wanderers Adelaide United 
um, the works. So he's great and he's been really cool in helping us sort of get the name out there and supporting us, which is cool. And hopefully, yeah, as I said, we'll try and tell his story. He's got a lot behind him with injuries, family, religion. His whole career is a massive story and hopefully one day we'll be able to put that on a limited edition something and sell it out to Tarek t-shirt yeah Tarek yeah. t Tarek. very cool Murph can get involved tracks <laughs> that, that's yeah. the goal yeah. that's the goal to reach the independent Sick. project t-shirt limited mm-hmm. edition yeah <laughs> that is wouldn't that be good Sick. Well, it sounds like you're loving yeah. loving your plate at the moment yeah but I enjoy it and it keeps me occupied so yeah, yeah. Sick. Mm-hmm. independentproject.com.au is that mm-hmm. the one check it out I think I think we're done for now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try and we'll try and catch up with Jenna through the AFLW season, through your next you just signed with the close again, didn't you? Mm-hmm. So yeah. we'll put that there. So there's a season coming up. Yeah. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. try and get you back in and we'll have some more chats and hopefully we can see what's been going on with, with everything from sharp chips to <laughs> cheese boards. Very Maybe good. have a cheese board ready next yeah, time. Just have on tables. Oh yeah. Triple sure. breeze just over here. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And you have to pay us for that interview because the cheese board doesn't come cheap. Okay. <laughs> Unless we get a sponsorship. Unless we get a sponsorship. Unless we get Say cheese. Do you have a quick Oh, awesome. Thank Thanks, you very much guys. For time. Appreciate so, your time. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Till next time. <laughs> <laughs> that was creepy. That was creepy. <laughs>